think one of the more overlooked aspects of Wes Anderson's filmography is his writing. Yes, he has beautiful sets, specific camera movements, and an interesting taste in music and editing, but he also writes all his own films. He always collaborates, but he still leaves a distinct impression on his protagonists that reflect his own life. Think of a Wes Anderson protagonist. They are typically smart, but with significant character flaws. They experience some sort of past trauma that forced them to grow up more quickly than they should have, so while they may seem mature on the exterior, they're still emotionally immature. I found this most prevalent in the world of Bombs, where three children experience the split of their parents. The film then cuts to them as adults, wearing the same outfits and doing the same things that they were 10 or so years ago. Wes Anderson now lives in Paris, France, and his French new wave inspiration is clear as well. In the 400 blows, the protagonist must run away from his fighting parents after they make it clear that they no longer want him. Mature children became immature adults, which is exactly what happened to Anderson. As a child growing up in Houston, Texas, his parents got divorced, which he cites as one of the most formative experiences of his life. And yes, I'm just reading his IMDb profile here. In high school, he wrote plays, which may sound familiar. He actually shot the movie Rushmore at his own high school, St. John's in Houston. My guess is that Anderson takes past flaws or fears within parts of his own personality and extends and imposes these aspects onto his characters. How much of this in your head is you? I, 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 I don't really think of it that way. I mean, I think... That there are parallels. There are parallels, yeah. I mean, uh, if I had seen this movie when I was 15 years old, I would have, that would have been my movie. That would have been the, the, I would have, it would have changed me. And characters can be manifestations of the subconscious, and films are a way that we can look inside the minds of auteurs. A quick psychoanalytic take on Rushmore is that Max is the ego, Bill Murray is the father, and Olivia Williams is the mother, that he must win over from the father. In Wes Anderson's favorite film, The Graduate, a similar thing happens when the protagonist is caught between the mother and the daughter. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> Aren't you? I'm not going to dive deeper, but if you look at Anderson's ensemble cast, they are often makeshift families or actual dysfunctional families. There's also recurring themes of infidelity, heartbreak, and innocent love. But what's the point? It's most likely something therapeutic in Anderson writing away his traumas and viewing it from an external point of view. In more recent VR experiences, one can talk to a therapist and then view back their confessions from the therapist's point of view. Removing yourself from an event can remove the biases that we inherently place upon the stories by prioritizing ourselves. Because that's biology. To survive, we have to protect ourselves in every way possible. Sometimes, maybe we shouldn't. Take it, it is a run. It was the time I got into 